Hi there, welcome to my channel guys. Glad you stopped by. Um, we're going to do a on the road short review of this bike here. It's the Voge 300R. Never heard of Voge? Well, let me tell you, it's the premium brand of a Chinese company, a Chinese motorcycle manufacturer called Lon Xin. Um, now I know what you're going to say, oh a Chinese bike, oh sturdiness and yeah reliability and stuff, but just you wait, watch this review, I've done some kilometers on this bike and I'm going to tell you about it, how it feels, how it rides, I'm going to put the specs right down there in the description and maybe on screen and yeah I'd, I'd say um, let's get started, let's ride the bike. Now, before we start riding, let's start the bike and uh, see how she sounds. Um, yeah, maybe I should engage neutral, yep. Quite a nice sound actually. Um, it's a single cylinder, uh, a single with 292.4 cc and it has 29 horsepower i might be wrong maybe it's 26 i'm sorry i'm going to display the correct number in the screen um, and 23.5 newton meters which are at 6500 revs peak horsepower is at 8500 revs so yes this is a single this bike needs revs just gonna go slowly here there's a lot of dirt on the road um, the engine is now I cannot give all the details I was told but it is inspired by a man yeah, Japanese manufacturer I heard um, don't know if that's true but yeah that's what I heard and uh, the engine actually feels really smooth. There aren't many vibrations in the handlebar or in the foot pegs, even though this is a single. And the brakes, as I said, I've done some kilometers. The brakes are actually, for me, the highlight on this bike for now, because they are really, really grippy. They have a great bite and they're really nice to those they do not have a lot of travel maybe I'd say about one millimeter of travel until the brake, brake discs get bitten by the calipers or the brake pads rather so um, the engine of course it doesn't have the big numbers th that as some of its competitors have it's uh, the power output is quite mellow and the uh, engine is not the most dynamic engine but I tell you what for let's say commuting uh, this sort of throttle response it has a tiny tiny little bit of lag and play but that's just really tiny um, you don't want to have those really aggressive singles uh, engines or single engine bikes uh, like a Dolin 90 Duke because um, it can get a bit exhausting in cities also in a uh, rain you don't need a rain mode on this bike it uh, as far as I know does not have any riding modes and uh, for rain it's optimal and on the country roads it's also not bad you just have to twist the throttle a, a little bit more the engine of course sounds quite well it's a bit loud not too loud still pleasant but it sounds like it has 10 horsepower more which doesn't need to be a bad thing does it Now 
Now the gearbox has the same issue, or the gear, the gear shift lever has the same issue as the brake lever. It's a bit too high, I have to raise my foot a little bit. Um, maybe you can adjust it, I haven't had a look yet. Um, if so, it would be a big plus, if not, it's not the end of the world. Um, ooh, I forgot my indicator. <laughs> The suspension is quite firm, not really soft. It makes the bike very agile and dynamic, contrary to the engine. But it does take away some comfort, so depending on what kind of rider you are, you want to exchange the suspension for aftermarket parts. Ooh, big pothole. Since you cannot adjust anything on this bike, on this suspension, which of course for this price tag and in, in, in this bike range, bike category is okay. Design wise, I actually like the Voge 300R. Now, um, of course, design and optics is always a matter of personal taste. And I have to say, for example, they have uh, a fake carbon structure or, or fairing here on the front fender, right over there and on the back. And I hate fake uh, carbon, but I have to give it to them. Um, this actually looks nice and feels nice. Now, there's matte gray or black lacquer on the fuel tank and on the side fairings which also looks really nice and it has a nice feel to it. Then again there's a minus, um, the stickers aren't lacquered over but uh, also Japanese manufacturers don't do that and uh, uh, Italians also have not done it on all their bikes. Then you get this uh, license plate holder which is kind of, a, well it's not a novelty but it's kind of unique and awesome in uh, this uh, price category, this bike category, and uh, I think it looks nice. It's, it makes the entire bag more slim and narrow. Um, yeah, of course from the side, not from the back. Um, the exhaust pipe is covered by this plastic. Optically, it is nice. Of course, the feel, it's kind of a cheap plastic, but yeah, other bike manufacturers did that. Um, I'd say, but if they did it, they did a better job. Um, it's, it's not bad, but it just feels a bit cheap. Then again, you have to say, and you have to consider, this is really a cheap bike, and you get a lot of bang for the buck out of this bike honestly swing arm looks nice and sturdy is sturdy um, the tone of the engine um, I don't know how you want to call this a really dark oxidized copper tone or maybe a magnesium tone hmm. bronze uh, well it, it, it's awesome it looks great it stands out and I like it um, then there are some issues I have with the frame now the frame is sturdy uh, Long-term reliability of this bike still has to be tested. Um, this bike has 1,200 kilometers roundabout. Um, I will keep you updated on this. I will talk to the dealer from time to time and tell you about it. But um, it is sturdy, the frame, but it does have an optic issue. Those welding seams, they're a bit coarse and could have been nicer. Um, but then again, yeah, it's a cheap bike. Uh, the price has to be visible and noticeable somewhere, doesn't it? You also get uh, exhaust cover here, down here, which also isn't always um, uh, stock on any bike. It's a nice addition and uh, yeah, I can't criticize that. Once again, I'm going to show you the USB port. It's even covered by a rubber cover, as you can see. and. It's actually, as I said before, a really great idea. So yeah, um, handlebar, just let's talk about the comfort, riding comfort really quickly. Handlebar is wide enough for anybody. It has a nice uh, uh, um, angle to it, um, a nice width to it, and I can't complain about it. And the saddle, um, and the pillion saddle uh, are made of kind of a suede leather, I think. Um, really feels nice, is comfortable, is not too soft, and you do not slip off of it 
with your pants especially with leather pants i do have a jeans on the right now but i can tell you it's really grippy so yeah um you can do a lot of miles on this bike without feeling unpleasant let's get going to the dealer and wrap this up Let's sum it up. We're back at the dealer. Um, it has great torque for most of the situations. The engine is a bit on the mellow side. It's not the most dynamic. It might be lacking for you if you want to be really, really fast and sporty. But then again, in the tight twisties, the su suspension can make up for it. It's really firm, not too firm. It still has some comfort on many roads just not the really bad roads performance of the brakes is more than enough i'd say the brakes can outperform the engine almost um so yeah that's all i can say to this bike i will be getting the 500 r now i guess he said 500 or might be the 500 ds this was a short review i hope you liked it and it was short enough and uh, <laughs> um, if you liked it please uh, share like subscribe hit the notification bell and yes i'll catch you in one of my moto vlogs or one of my next reviews so thanks a lot for watching and see ya and as we say in Bavaria servus